I've actually been waiting for this specific moment to create this video because I know where a lot of us ant keepers are from. This is the beginning of the ant nuptial flight season, the period when drones and young queens fly off leaving their nest of origin forever to mate and start their own ant colonies, continuing the next generation, the way ants have been doing it for millions and millions of years. Welcome to the Ants Vienna Ant Channel and let the ant season 2021 begin. So, you are a newcomer and are overflowing in excitement of the first time you might be able to catch a queen ant yourself or are an experienced ant keeper who looks forward to the upcoming ant season hoping to get your hands on a new ant species you haven't had the chance to keep so far. Whichever might be the case, I suggest you keep on watching this video until the end as I am going to share what you can expect to see on this channel in the weeks to come now that spring is taking over. For millions of us around the world keeping ants as pets, nuptial flight season feels like Christmas. It keeps the ant keeping hobby fresh and exciting. Even more so if you live in a region where native ant species hold a winter break called hibernation period during times when it's freezing and cold outside. I for one live in Central Europe Austria which does force ants into hibernation during winter time thanks to its climate. And I am pleased to take all my pet ant colonies out of the basement once again and watch them grow bigger and bigger. Some of my colonies already inhabit their own ant farms, others are waiting to get out of their test tubes and we also might be introducing some completely new ant species to the channel this season. So let's have a look on the colonies that I am keeping in dedicated formicaria first. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the video as it really helps me out and check if you are subscribed with that bell icon set to all notifications. You may need to double check on that since many of my subscribers said they haven't been notified of my latest video releases. Ok, first up is our Lasius emarginatus starter colony. The queen and her 11 workers did successfully make it through the winter without casualties. I am keeping them in this self-made DIY Utong ant farm which gives them both nesting space and a foraging area on top. Since Lasius emarginatus prefer nesting in stone, I expect them to develop and grow well in this environment. Next up would be our Formica cunicularia colony. This is the first colony I've officially kept on this channel and my favorite ant species so far. I love the fast stop and go maneuvers that Formica ants take when foraging. Now the population of our colony has been somewhat higher in the past. I suppose that the queen's first workers have died since nanitics don't get very old but cost less energy to produce and massively help queen ants early on in return. The colony now has a worker count of around 40 to 50 workers and depending on their growth we might even need to introduce them to a bigger setup in a couple of months. To the big girls now, Campanotus ligniperdus. The ants that please me most from a color perspective. The contrast that their glossy black head and gaster compared to the matte crimson red mesozoma create looks absolutely amazing in my eyes. Their physical size also helps notice 
and observe them feed one another through a process called trophallaxis a lot easier and clearer. I used to keep two Campanotus ligniperdus colonies. The one you see here I moved in a test tube for the winter and the other one in the yellow Udong ant farm I've gifted to a friend who also wanted to give ant keeping a try. This colony will get the chance to move in one of my self-made formicaria very soon. You can check all my ant farm creations by clicking on the corresponding info card on the top right after watching this video. Of course, we cannot sweet talk everything. In ant keeping, you will not only make positive experiences, because such is life. I've already stated this in a video earlier this year, but our Serviformica Fusca Queen has passed away due to unknown reasons, leaving her 10 workers behind. I hope I can find another Formica Queen Ant this season and I'm willing to try out Queen Adoption. This is a process where you introduce a new queen to an existing colony where the workers accept her. This leaves me with some hope for this colony. Speaking of hope, a spark of hope also exists for Lazio's Niger colony. Last year, I've been away from home and my aunts for a long period of time due to personal health issues. Unfortunately, the person I had entrusted with the care of my aunts during that time must have left our Lazio's Niger without water for too long. Because when I returned home, I found all the 200 plus workers dead in a completely dry setup. I tried watering them intensely, but it didn't do any good. Thankfully though, the queen was still alive and wandering around, seeking for survivors under her dead daughters. I decided to take the setup apart and moved the queen to a fresh test tube setup with a few larvae that hadn't dried out yet. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to tell you that the queen did manage to grow that few larvae into workers and we will have a new start with the same queen and I feel that we owe her some proper treatment. So, this time around, I'll be giving her and her few workers access to another setup with a larger amount of digging medium since Lazius Niger love digging as a species. Now bear with me, we have one more candidate living in a formicarium, namely our three queen Lazius Flavus colony inhabiting the ant island I've created last year. However, We'll talk about how this colony and their natural setup has aged in a separate video. Another colony we won't be talking about today is our Campanotus nicobarensis colony. This is an exotic ant species, at least from the perspective of a European like myself, and does not need hibernation. I've been making regular videos on this colony, so feel free to check out their whole timeline here. I hope you've been enjoying yourself so far. If so, make sure to smash that like button and share this video with other ant enthusiasts. Moving on to the test tube colonies now. In test tubes, we keep founding and small ant colonies until they reach a population size that will allow them to sustain themselves in a bigger world like an ant farm. You might think that the inside of a test tube is a cramped space, and you are right. But, and this is a big but, ants love tight spaces, and especially early on, this simulates the founding chamber queen ants dig in the wild. Now, if you think 
that nothing happens in a test tube setup, you couldn't be more wrong. And take consistent care of the young as soon as the queen lays the eggs by transferring them to the right places in terms of humidity within this small test tube, feeding them to reach larva and pupa stages and consistently covering them with their antibiotic saliva before the young finally turn into worker ants and help the colony by contributing their own workforce into it. That being said, we are now watching our Campanotus vagus carpenter ant colony in the background. I've caught a few queens during late April last year, along with some Campanotus phallax queens. Without wanting to spoil too much for you, I'll formally be introducing these colonies and provide them for Micaria matching the conditions these ants tend to seek in the wild. You can check all the ant species guides I've made so far here. Also waiting in their test tube are our Tetramorium Caespitum queen with her workers. They too made it through the winter unharmed. Note that this is the first Tetramorium queen I've caught myself, but the third I've kept. Unfortunately, the queens of the other two Tetramorium colonies I've been gifted have passed away without obvious reasons. Now, last but not least in the test tube category are a couple of Solenopsis fugax queens I picked up from the front of our house's door last September. I hope to see them lay some eggs pretty soon. Solenopsis fugax are known as thief ants for feeding on other species brood in the wild. So I think it would be very interesting to see how they behave in our captive care. To keep things fresh here on Ants Vienna, I am also thinking of getting a new ant colony. Now, I've run a poll about which ant species you guys would like to see next on the channel. And fact is that the most votes went towards Mesor Barbarus. I have to say that I myself am pretty biased with harvester ants since they were all over the place in Greece where I used to live as a child. So they give me a feeling of being at home. But what I am really interested in is what do you guys think? Is Mesor Barbarus a good choice or would you like to see another ant species join the channel? And which one? Let me know your opinion by commenting in the comments below. Many of the pet ant colonies we've mentioned will need more space to grow, thus their own ant terraria. So I also plan on making more DIY ant farms in form of build tutorials for you guys. Handcrafting much of the stuff that my little pet ants need is an aspect of the ant keeping hobby that I really like and I don't want to miss for any reason. I guess what I am trying to say here is look forward to more ant farm build tutorials coming soon. We've got a dedicated playlist on the channel for you to watch. Now regarding ant nuptial flights, a question I often get from you guys is when do queen ants fly where I live? And this is a pretty tricky question to answer since this depends on where you do actually live. However, to give you a hint and make things easier for you, I suggest you search online for a so-called ant nuptial flight schedule, which is essentially a list of all ant species and the time that they fly to mate. If you want to know more about this specific topic 
and the nuptial flight schedule I personally use, I suggest you go watch this video I've made, which will cover a lot of things you might be asking yourself. And also guys, feel free to ask me anything in the comments. I read them all, I promise. If you want to see how many and what types of quinans I caught last year, you can feel free to check out the videos that appear on your screen right now. And I wish you all good luck in your quinan search this ant nuptial flight season.